On this blessed day, we thank thee for giving our family one more crack at togetherness. Amen. Hey, you're listening to 200 Proof Gospel, the podcast. I'm Craig D'Onofrio. I am Pastor Troy New Year. Yeah, he's, he's got to throw out that pastor out there. Oh, I'm him, the Reverend Pastor Troy New Year. Make him feel a little more important than he I don't know. Is. Yeah. At least I don't go with Reverend all the time. You, you get a lot of, you know, you got a lot of education. We, we, we went through an awful lot to yeah, yeah. be pastors, I guess, but... Anyway, <laughs> uh, you can subscribe to this program on iTunes, Speaker, Podbean, uh, any outlet where you get your podcasts. We're probably there. iTunes, we are now on iHeartRadio. Yes. That's a big deal to me because it took it's forever huge. to get through on that. Because uh, It's huge. I, I'm, and you persevered. Apparently, they require a certain level of listenership and or perseverance in pestering them to say, hey... Can we be on your on your no, gizmo there? Actually, we, I thought that they actually approached you and said, "Hey, y- yes, can you yes. put our? Can you put your show on? That our, is absolutely. Our service? Oh yes, yes. Just to yeah, drive they, some more traffic. They pestered me to no yes. end. Over I think this. that was it. So anyway, we're there <laughs> uh, Friday mornings on Pirate Christian Radio. Get the app for your smart devices. Two hundred proof gospel at gmail dot com. We would love to hear from you. We have some emails today. Uh, and of course, we are coming up upon Thanksgiving. Indeed. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about Thanksgiving, and then we'll go to the mailbag. And I was going to play a little Thanksgiving ditty, but all of a sudden, now I've got that spinning beach ball of death on my MacBook. Oh, no. And okay. it probably will burst into flames at any moment here. I'm going to step back. Uh, can yes, we do the it, toast? It could. Well, it, I'm trying to get that to work. Okay, here we go. Now okay. I, I got the soundboard back up. And uh, raise your iPad, your whatever you have, your mug, your keep your hands on the steering wheel if you're driving, but be prepared for the toast. To that washing that declares us blameless and pure, that will cause us to stand without shame on that day. Amen. 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 Clink. So, now we got a drink. Mm. Mm. Oh, so good and refreshing. It is. Oh. And for our listeners, that is a pure uh, water, ice water that we're drinking Actually, I've got a little crystal light in mine. Oh, do you? It's tropical flavor, coconut. Oh, man. uh, Coconut, of course. Pineapple and coconut, I think it is. Yeah. I just got plain ice water. I don't know. I didn't even offer you a little spritz. That's okay. I should have offered you a little. I I feel bad now. I'm good. (sighs) Ah, boy. His life is just hard sometimes. It, it is. You know, Happy Thanksgiving <laughs> to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. This wish goes out to everyone. Thanks for all you do. There you go. Thanksgiving is upon us. That was Paula singing that, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. It, uh, she likes to inhale helium and then sing songs. <laughs> Oh, I'm working on a cramp in my leg. Oh, no. Oh, that's not good. Okay. So, anyway, got my leg straightened out. That's better. Um, Thanksgiving. Yes, Chur- indeed. Church holiday or not church holiday? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So, what's in the mailbag? Uh, no, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> we answered that question, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Kind of depends on who you are, right? I mean, church holiday, no. And um, church holiday, yes. I I am of the camp where, you know, hey, it's not really part of the church year. Right. And so, yeah, I kind of go, I I drift towards no. Okay. Well, it's, you know, it's not really in the liturgical calendar, as they call it. Right. Uh, Whereas Christmas and Easter and Good Friday are. Oh yeah, and yeah, ascension and other those definitely other are, days yeah. like that. The saints' days, right? saints' days, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Saint Ambrose, uh, what is that? January twenty first, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. That's Maybe a bit it's in random. December. Thank you. 
Okay. He's my patron saint, so Is I should he? know this. Yeah. Okay. Good Italian boy, former yeah. politician turned pastor. Oh, okay. Huge influence on St. Augustine, just like me. I had a profound influence on St. Augustine. Profound, <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, so it's not really in the calendar, and yet, no. uh, you know, we're told in the second commandment that we are to not misuse the name of the Lord, but we are to use it rightly for prayer, praise, and... Oh, and to give thanks. Yes, yes. yes. So I, should, I remember that from my we should use that. Uh, we should use it in November, especially. The third Thursday yeah. of November, we should well, use the Second Commandment. It's not as though I'm opposed to Thanksgiving Day. I just, you know, I'm just, I lean towards the idea of it not being a church thing specifically. Now we still, we still have a, a Thanksgiving Eve service at our church. Yeah, but at your church it revolves around pie, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, because pie is delicious. Pie is awesome. <laughs> Can't you give thanks for pie? I do. Yeah, yeah, I do, and I also. Curse God for pie because I like okay. it too much. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. make a, a bourbon pecan pie with spiced pecans, it's got a little bit of cayenne pepper in there and stuff. It's amazing. If you like pecans, I'm sure that that. Okay. Yeah. You know, never mind. Okay. So let's just move on. I love pumpkin pie, but it tends to give me heartburn. Something about the nutmeg. So I have to load up on the Pepsi if I'm going to have pumpkin pie. Okay. Which is good. So, anyway, back. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, so more we, than you wanted to know. We have a pie and praise service Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah, yeah and we bet. we have a service of prayer and uh, yeah, prayer and preaching is the service in the so preaching and prayer, preaching and what is that in the prayer you know? and preaching? So prayer and preaching, we, yeah, we both wrong. we both have services that have all the p words. So yeah. what's the problem? Pie, prayer, and preaching. Yes, I think maybe we'll need to extend our our and Thanksgiving service. Pray, praise, and give thanks, and pie, uh, and yeah, okay. So our country, 1620, the Puritans came to the, not yet United States of America, but the New World. Ooh, yeah. And uh, people have been here for a couple of decades before this already, you know, exploring and whatnot. Yes. But those pilgrims, those Mayflower folks, they come here uh, searching for religious freedom because they they couldn't find it in England. I'm assuming the... uh, Wars between the Anglicans and Roman Catholics and all that kind of didn't allow much room for this brand of Calvinism. Well, you know, I guess in that sense, they're kind of like uh, like the people we talk about as the radical reformers in, yeah. in Germany that, you know, okay, oh, this Reformation didn't go far enough. Right. And so they mm-hmm. they punch out of England and they head over to Holland. And they hang out there for a while because there's more religious freedom for them there. But unfortunately, those Dutch people are a little liberal in their lifestyle. Well, I thought Holland was more famous for some other freedoms uh, personally, but maybe I'm uh, thinking of something else. Are you thinking of the whole uh, uh, marijuana thing? Is that what yeah, that, yeah, that could be. I don't think marijuana was really an issue in those days. Not for the Puritans? I don't think it was an issue for anyone. Huh. I, I think... Probably, if you smoked that, uh, <gasps> you were some weird guy who smoked weeds, hmm. uh, some sort of bush. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, I guess tobacco is also a so, bush of some sort. So, get me out of Holland here, Craig. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's get so back anyway, to the they, world. They, they go to Holland, and uh, it's not pure enough. It's not, not pure. Well, enough. not really, of course. Yeah, yeah. And so, a guy named Martin Stefan. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> no, not Martin Stefan. <laughs> Uh, that was a different purity cult. That is a uh, different thing altogether. <laughs> oh, goodness. For those of you in the Missouri Synod, you understand what I'm talking about. For those of you not in the Missouri Synod, yeah. look it up. Um, so anyway, they say, this place is not cutting it. We got to go somewhere else. And I don't know how the new world comes into focus here, but let's go to a place where there are no civilized people to pollute our children. Well, if I, I remember my grade it. school history right, um, they were looking for India. Well, no, no, no. That was the discovery of America. Oh. That was not the Oh, pilgrims. that's something different? Yeah, that was uh, ah. a, guy, a guy named uh, Columbo. <laughs> Columbo. Name, right, yes, yes. Yeah. And looking for, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, uh, they end up coming to America, <laughs> and uh, they settled Plymouth Plantation, or, or uh, not Plymouth Plantation. Plymouth Rock. Plymouth, Plymouth, Massachusetts. 
Yes. And uh, they kind of come on a company charter, and they're working for a company who pays for them to come over, and they're supposed to be sending goods and whatnot back to England in exchange for their passage and property and everything. And uh, it's kind of a communist, a communal kind of existence, much like in the Book of Acts. Well, so yeah, Acts chapter 2, where everyone held all their property together in common. Which is the only time that you hear about that, and then it disappears. Uh, it, and for good reason, because because of that, no one had real incentive to set aside food for the winter. And they they apparently didn't know what they were getting into with a uh, northeastern winter. And mm, half of yeah. the 102-ish, I think it was, uh, pilgrims die from starvation and disease over that winter. And uh, these, these fine, fine uh, natives teach them the joys of corn and how to store food for the winter. And uh, a lot of these people came, they were, you know, like cobblers and carpenters. They didn't know anything about uh, farming or anything Yeah, they like didn't that. really have the skill set to yeah. be, uh, be in a new world. Right. Yeah, so they were a little naive, and a lot of them starved. And uh, so they kind of instituted a uh, more laissez-faire attitude toward property. You get to uh, keep a portion of what you make for yourself. So if you make a lot, you'll have stores for the winter and so forth. And so they have a good harvest, uh, those few that are left, 50 or so. And they mm-hmm. have a big feast of giving God thanks for the abundance that they have been given. And, uh, of course, they invite Squanto and the rest of the kids, and uh, they have a big party. Yeah. And and so, like, uh, again, just to kind of go back to my grade school days, that uh, that our Thanksgiving is, is, is in some way a direct reflection of that first Thanksgiving. Right. right. Yeah. But the important thing is that our secular culture over the years has kind of gone to oh, this is the pilgrims giving the Native Americans thanks for helping them out and for saving their oh, lives. I've not heard that, actually. Instead of giving God thanks that mm-hmm. he has provided for them abundantly and uh, provided them also with these neighbors who have taught them the vocation of a pilgrim to exist and other things. So uh, here is the story of Thanksgiving, where we mm-hmm. give God thanks. And so back to the second commandment, we call upon God for prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. And so in all reality, we often, I hope weekly, give God thanks for all of the things that we have in this life. No, including daily. Including our friends. Daily. Daily yeah. give them thanks, actually, yeah. So I'm saying in worship, at least. So. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, if, if nothing else, it is really nice that, uh, especially in an increasingly hectic society, that we do have one day set aside to give thanks, to at least have a thankful heart. Yes. And and there is a really nice tie-in with that, between that and the church. Right. You know, even though it's not a church holiday. It's not. It's not a church holiday. But that's okay. But it kind of kicks off the Christmas shopping season. Oh, good grief. So, that... It, it kind of gets into the church that way too, I think. Whereas this is <laughs> this is the launch of that kind of Advent time, you know, comes shortly after Thanksgiving. And yeah. So, okay. You know, so so there's a ramping up, a cultural ramp up. Okay. That kind so of filters into the church. Also, if, if we're going to go like, down we're that ready road for Christmas, are we going down that road? Really? I guess we then, just then did. we can I go down know. that road because uh, Christmas, of course, is a is a festival, it's a celebration in the church. Advent is a minor penitential season. Oh, uh, or and, is it? Yes, There's it is. There's debate on this. Well, why would there be a debate about that? Well, because some people don't think that it is a penitential season. Well, they're wrong. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> just, but, uh, just like that. But uh, I, I guess the uh, the flip side, though, so, so if we include Thanksgiving, so the church celebrates and sets aside a day to give thanks, uh, that we go through a minor penitential season. Uh, it was somber, reflective sort of thing, not quite Lent caliber, but then we have a celebration of Christmas. And the world, by contrast, then, would go to a day of thanksgiving as a day of gluttony, 
that leaps headlong into a frantic pace of purchasing and uh, spending that ends in an exhausted Christmas day, which... Well, why are you a communist? You're a communist, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit at heart. <laughs> A little bit at heart. You know, I, right. every, every Just, time I read Acts chapter 2, I'm like, well, that's really a neat idea. Too bad it doesn't work. Yeah, no. Doesn't. Too bad people are sinners and it doesn't work. Doesn't. So. No. And I know me. I'd be a free writer. I'd just kind of like, <laughs> well, hey, Troy, plant plant a couple extra rows of corn for me, would you? And, I would do that for you. Well, thank you. Okay. See? So we have this relationship, we go. much like your children have with you, where it's like, Dad, guy. Can I have some? Can I borrow the car? Can I? Got oh. five bucks? Can I? Anyway, anyway. Um, so Thanksgiving, uh, great time of the year, great time to give God thanks. Uh, very appropriate to have a service of Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, but it's not one of the high holy days of the church. No, 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 no. Speaking of which... So it's not church, but church. Okay, but so yeah. randomly, we, we're bouncing around on this. What do you think is the highest holy day of the church? Oh, my. I have, I have a theory on this that yeah. no one seems to like, but... Um, the highest, most holy day of the church year. Yeah. Uh, you know, you got the two big ones. You got Christmas and Easter. Right. Of which I tend to think Easter is actually slightly more important... Uh, but if you had to hinge one thing that the whole church year would revolve around, my gut would tell me to go with Good Friday. Ooh, someone who agrees with me. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes, and and people don't often think of, oh, Good Friday service, we have to go. Um, but if there is no crucifixion, no sacrifice for the sins of the world... Mm then the rest is moot, you know. Indeed. But also, yeah. then you, you also have, without Easter, there's no Good Friday either, because without Easter, just another guy died on a cross. So you, you have yes. to have Easter for Good Friday as well. Well, and So they're, okay. they're kind of in this, in this uh, you know, you don't get one without the other kind of deal. Well, but you got to have Christmas in order to have Good Friday in order to have That's Easter. That's true. I and mean, they're all tied together, and they're all very important, but... You know, well, Good Friday is kind of the hinge point, right? Right. That's what I say. Yeah. yeah, we preach Christ crucified, is what Paul says. That seems to be the yeah. the name of the game. Mailbag two zero zero proof. Yeah. And the world is going on. That there. was wonderful. That was strange. Apparently, I triple tap tapped my keyboard or something by accident. That's cool. So uh, two zero zero proof gospel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mailbag. Well. It said, as a matter of fact. So uh, well, let's go to the mailbag. Anyway, let's let's do that. Uh, Jan writes, "What do you expect uh, out of your congregation?" Wow. Uh, <sighs> well, I gotta say, the most vulgar and crass part of me expects a paycheck, but <laughs> that's uh, that's the worst part. Dude, that's biblical. Yeah, I guess. Um, what do you mean? You guess. The, yeah, the, worker is. Is, I mean, the, the worker, worker is worth his hire. Yeah, you're worth your, worth your hire. I know, but I'm, yeah, I'm the, a, the, man, the one who preaches the gospel ought to make his living from preaching the yeah, gospel. Yeah, but I, I should be willing to do it even if I didn't. Well, I, I know you probably totally are if it came right down to it. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Know. So, <laughs> all right. But, <laughs> but, but you had a more serious point, beyond actually. That, yeah. Okay, go. Be, beyond that, you know what I expect out of my congregation? Tell me, Craig, what do you expect out of your congregation? I expect them to be sinners. Wow. That's I think I they expect. can handle that. Yeah, they do it. Okay. Uh, but I also expect them to come and receive the forgiveness of their sins. Oh, there you go. But, I, I yeah. you know, I think there are pastors out there, even in our own fellowship, who don't expect that they're sinners. They're, 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 their parishioners are going to be sinners or they can't believe that they are, and, and so they start preaching moralism at them, uh, thinking that they're going to get some sort of moral reform out of their folks. Well, it's, it's, it's very tempting. And, you know, one of, the, one of the errors that we always make with church, uh, pastors and laity alike, is that we always start talking about, well, the church people shouldn't behave like that. No, no one should. Every time there's a problem, you know, <laughs> well, church people ought not to act like that. And the reality is that 
Okay, but church is about the only place where we gather together as sinners because we're sinners. Yeah. Right. And so you not, put a not bunch Not in of, celebration of our sin. No, 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 but in full knowledge of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, I, that's one of the things I, I learned a long time ago uh, in, in my ministry is that I fully expect people to be sinners. Yeah. Yeah. But I also expect them to be forgiven of their sins. So they need to come to the house of God and receive the gifts. Well, that's the ideal thing, right? Yeah. That, that law, gospel, knowledge, that I am fully aware of what I do as being uh, in opposition to God's law, and yet I'm also fully aware that Christ redeems me from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So her next question then is, how can your congregation help you? I'll let you go first on this one. Uh, what? It, in being sinners, or...? Does help you. Question. Period. Question mark, whatever. Well, you know, it's interesting because we, we just finished up, uh, you know, Pastoral Appreciation Month, right? So that sounds like one of those questions, like, how can we help you, Pastor? And um, I, I think that uh, pastors in general, or myself in particular, you know, one of the most encouraging things is what you've already said, is when people actually come to church. Yeah. That, to, yeah. That was my answer was show up. Yeah, yeah, show up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come, hear the Word, receive the sacraments. Uh, hey, if you come to Bible study, that's a bonus point for me. I'm like, hey, that's even better. That's great. And double extra credit if you don't gripe at me. It's just in general. In general. <laughs> but but you know what else, though? I mean, if, if you do come and you've got a concern, I want to hear about it. Sure. I yeah. want to hear about it. Yeah. And I'd rather hear about it from you as... as uh, as a gripe than from someone else as a gossip. Yeah. yeah. I, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I I would much rather hear it directly from you. I always love the pastor people are saying. <laughs> people are saying. Which people? Well, I, I'm not really at liberty to say which people, pastor. Okay. I, I just, um, yes. you know, but there are concerns. And, uh, you know, I, I just feel like I need to tell you about the concerns that some people have. Well, it's, boy, yeah, you know, and that's code for I am concerned. <laughs> and because, but it just, it sounds so much better if we say, well, there's a lot of people saying this. Yeah. There's so, more weight to it. Right? So really, uh, what I'm telling you in a way that I don't understand that I'm telling you is the church hates you, pastor. <laughs> Everyone hates you. And that's, <laughs> okay. you know, that that's kind of the the received message in that. Oh, my. And you understand that yeah. it's like three people who are getting together in a coffee clutch and whipping each other into a frenzy, and that's kind of it. Yeah, but pastors are sinners too, right? Not and me. So, no, uh, I've never seen You know, that. there are no. times when I, I, I want to say that every pastor is fully mature and aware, and they know what's going on, but sometimes pastors hear something like that, and they just lose their minds. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I've I've been there, you know, especially when I was younger in the pastorate, where mm-hmm. you get two or three people who you you discover as you mature as a pastor, these are people who like to complain because they're lonely and they want attention, and so they complain because they're they're like a misbehaving child. I, I get attention this way, and so they grouse at you and they cause you consternation and everything else, and you realize ninety five percent of the congregation could care less. Uh, but you've got a couple of people who simply want attention, and there are more constructive ways to do this, but you you understand this. And then sometimes there are legitimate concerns. Uh, yes. and, and that kind of feeds into the next question that Jen okay. asks, is it easy to be a new pastor in a new congregation? And you and I are both fairly new in our congregation still. Oh, okay, and how do we mean that, that uh, question then? I don't uh, know. Is it... Uh... Now, I assume, just like what you just said, coming to a new congregation right. as a pastor. Right, yeah. Not necessarily, oh, you're a brand new pastor in a brand new ministry situation. No, no, no. We're, okay, we're going to but... assume our situations, that we, okay. are, we are somewhat seasoned pastors coming into Somewhat. a established congregation, <laughs> okay. but it's new to us. It's and new, new to, to us them. and new to them. So here we all are, congregation and pastor, getting used to each other. Mm-hmm. Is that easy? Is it easy? Oh, sure, of course. Yeah, great. Move on. 
<laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Really? Right. You're going to do that? Um, you know, here, here's the way I describe it, that every pastor, if he's there for longer than a handful of years, right, maybe even like three years, um, he leaves a hole in the congregation that is specifically shaped to him. Right. His gifts, his strengths, he leaves a unique hole in the congregation. Uh, and one of the first things that happens is that when a new pastor comes in, he's kind of shoved into that same hole because organizationally the uh, the whole church has you know, kind of formed itself around the pastor's strengths and weaknesses. Right. And so immediately there's a discomfort because he doesn't quite fit and it's uncomfortable for the church, it's uncomfortable for the pastor, uh, and there it, it takes a little bit of time for the church as an organization to form itself around this new pastor. So you have expectations, you know, a pastor who's been there 20, 20 plus years or something like that. Yeah. He has kind of been able to form the church into a congregation that's at least somewhat comfortable with his style, his way of service and, and so forth. And we have to realize there are pastors with different skills, different uh, abilities, different mm-hmm. emphases in their in their uh, lives, in their service and whatnot. You have some who are great administrators. You have some who are great counselors. You have some who are great teachers and preachers. And, you know, you, you just have a different skill set than the guy who was before you. And exactly. you're never going to actually fit... Uh, just like the guy who was before you. No. Well, it, one, you can't. No. Uh, and, and two, I want to point out, this is not a knock on anybody. It's no, just, no, no, no. as you said, different skill sets. Right. Different gifted sets. Right. Uh, and generationally, also, we see different educations that come along. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the seminary in the 50s had a different flavor than the seminaries in the 70s and a different flavor than oh. the seminaries in the 90s yes. and so forth and so on. So you you have different professors, you have uh, even mm-hmm. in our church body you've seen this tremendous swing in the 1970s uh where we went from being heading I mean just diving headlong into liberalism slamming on the brakes and turning around the other direction. And, uh, you know, there's kind of been this... And shaking off a ton of people while we did. Yeah, yeah. I, there's been kind of this confusion ever since, because we mm-hmm. have so many pastors trained in so many different schools of thought and so forth. So... You, you know, that's actually a great analogy, slamming on the brakes. So we're all riding in the back of the pickup truck. Yeah. And someone slams on the brakes and whips around. So, we, yeah, the, you know, some are like banged up, uh, some, yeah, but, uh, but you know, I, I think the, uh, the wise pastor though, when he comes in a new situation is fully aware that, uh, uh, things weren't done the way he likes them before, but that doesn't mean that they were wrong. No. It's just that they were different. Right. And so he kind of, you know, the, the wise pastor I think has to kind of coast for a little while, uh, get to know people, get to know things, get to know history before he says or does anything that's kind of shaking things up. Well, and you have to realize also that the perceptions of the people isn't always the reality of the previous pastor Very true. And, and other things. Yeah. So sometimes there's just a personality conflict. Yeah. Uh, and and so, you know, that pastor was something else, and but it was just a personality thing. Or mm-hmm. you come in with a totally different personality, and this is a change, and we aren't comfortable with this. Because it's not what we've been used to. You know, what's actually more dangerous, I think, is that you come in with a different personality and people think, oh, that's exactly what we were waiting for. The perfect pastor has arrived. And you go, yeah, he has. You know, just, <laughs> you know it's, uh, I think it's actually more dangerous that way. Well, and that kind of leads us to Jan's next question is, how does a pastor handle people who don't want to listen to change? I, th- I think maybe she means don't accept uh, change and that sort of thing. <sighs> Okay. And, um, you know, th- this is something that is, there are certain things that you can change right away and certain things that you don't want to touch for quite a while. And, and uh, you know... Th- and what those things are yeah. depend upon the congregation and its history. Right. Uh, yeah. And how ready they are to change. You know, I, um, coming into St. James, I have been amazed at 
how the people called me wanting change. Uh, mm. You know that mm-hmm. they they said we're ready to move in a, a forward in a in a uh, you know a, a new direction and um, you know it, it's been kind of amazing that uh, the, there has been kind of this embracing of change and they they said we we need to be a congregation that reaches out more. We're growing older. And if we're going to have a future, we need to think about this. And mm-hmm. so things like podcasting and video production and things like that, which are some of my strong suits, apparently they so. were looking yeah. for this, you know? And so, hey, that's pretty cool, you know? We want someone who's a little more technologically savvy and so forth. Um, so th- so there, there, are, there are a lot of different things involved with that. But those are, those are kind of, um, I hate to say the word superficial, but I'm going to say it anyway. Kind of well, let's call it so you're, surface you're, level. You're calling me superficial? Is that what not you're to your face? <laughs> well, wait, no, I am, I guess, because we're like staring at each other. But uh, so let's say, let's say surface level sort of stuff, right? Uh, the, it's changes to uh, out, outreach practice, that type of thing. It's not really getting down deep necessarily to the core of who people are, right? Uh, and and I think the deeper you get to that core of what the church is, the more careful you have to be about change. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can show up the first day and say, "Well, no, I, uh, I, I know the previous pastor wore a uh, wore a certain t- a suit and tie all the time, but I, I tend to wear my clerical collar. Is that going to be okay?" You know, um, so those are again the surface level sort of stuff. Uh, where am I going with that? Bail me out of know. this. Uh, I have no idea. Okay, just right. throwing you under the bus at this point. Then. Okay, well, I appreciate that. But <laughs> uh, oh, oh, so how do we deal with uh, people who are resistant to change? Right, right, right. Well, I, you know, there's there's different levels of change, and so we've got to find out: uh, are they resistant to some sort of deep change that they should be resistant to? Uh, are they just kind of resistant to any and all changes because it's uncomfortable, uh, or or do they just need some more thought about it? Yeah, and you know, you're going to run into this also. The congregation says, we realize we need to make a lot of changes, and everyone says, yes, we do. And then when we change mm-hmm. something that that person really doesn't want to change, they, they kind of go, well, I didn't think we were going to change that. Well, no, not you that know? thing. <laughs> I like that yeah. thing, so yes. I, we can't change that one, you know? Right. And uh, so anyway, that's that's where our, our sinfulness and our... our uh, you know, our self-centeredness yeah. kind of comes in at times where we, we aren't willing to make the changes that make us a little uncomfortable. Well, and, you know, and I, I want to play the other end of the spectrum, too, because I, I tell my congregation regularly that if I, like, stop preaching the gospel, if I start preaching about something else, then it's time to make a change, you know? <laughs> right. It's you know, that You need to stop me, get rid of me, and bring in somebody who's going to preach pure scriptural to truth. Right. You know, so uh, so there's an example of someone, yeah, no, no, we can't deal with this change, Pastor, because you've gone off the rails. Right. And right. that's, you know, that's a legitimate resistance to change. And yes, and there there are some things that should never be changed. And exactly. proclamation of the gospel is certainly, mm. I would say, number one. Core. Um, yeah. You know, also, I'll, I'll say in my congregation... Uh, I've told the leadership repeatedly, if I'm, if I'm making changes and they're going too fast or in a bad mm-hmm. direction, I really depend on you to say, hey, hey, pastor, you need to slow down a little bit here. You know, there needs to yeah. be a little humility on the part of the pastor also that uh, maybe I'm really upsetting the apple cart without intending to. Yeah. And uh, I need some, some voices of clarity on this. Well... Unfortunately, all you ever hear is the horror stories of the pastor who comes in and says, oh, thank gosh I am here, because now finally you guys can do things right. Yeah, we're, we're going to fix everything now. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah and, and, and we'll, have the, we'll have this place straightened out by Christmas, right? Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Uh, and all you ever hear is you know, the guy who blows up a congregation because he comes in with his heavy hand. Yeah. But you never really hear about the guy who just kind of patiently goes through, bides his time, bringing about change after change, and eventually... You know, in ten years, uh, the congregation is uh, completely different. Yeah, and you know, after you're at a church for a while, you look back and you find your the the guy before you had some really great skills yeah. in areas that you don't, 
and uh, you find your deficiency there also, and you say, wow, you know, uh, yeah. I wish I could do that as well as he did. Oh, man, yes, yeah. yes. So anyway, Jan, thank you for the questions. We're we're pretty much over time. You ready to call it a day here, Troy? Yeah, I'm good for that. All right, well, let's go out with this a little turkey song. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. This wish goes out to everyone. Thanks for all you do. Just want to remind you to be sure to subscribe to this program on iTunes, Speaker Podbean. Get the app. You can find us on TuneIn Radio and now on iHeartRadio. Friday mornings, Pirate Christian Radio. Email us, be like Jan. 200proofgospel <laughs> at gmail.com. Hey, thanks, Troy. Thank you, Craig. See you.